Hey, Mr. Watt, how are you? Hey, Mr. Baldwin, I'm good. So we've got segment four of our volcanic activity segment, and this is going to be a little bit different because we're only talking about volcanoes that used to be there and yeah. not volcanoes that are there anymore. So we're talking about the remnants. And kind of them. features that they left behind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we have a little bit of terminology here that we need to cover first. We've got four words. Um, the first one of those four words is the word tabular. Okay. And I think of the word table when I think about tabular. So I think about a table-topped, table-top-shaped volume of rock. Okay. So it's going to be nice and flat, flat and horizontal, right? Perfect. What's the second term? Uh, we're talking about massive. Okay. Massive is usually a term when we just talk about things being kind of random and big. Yeah. So just it's massive. It's, it's really huge. big. It's yeah, huge. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then we have concordant. So concordant mm -hmm. means that. Whatever the structure is, mm -hmm. it's parallel to what was there before. Okay. So if we've got layers that are horizontal in mm -hmm. orientation, yeah. then the igneous layers that are involved in it are parallel or horizontal in orientation as well. So if I had some igneous, like so, um, like a magma that was coming up and it hit maybe a solid, like a denser, or thick layer of rock, it would hit it and maybe spread out. Spread out and be parallel to it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right. And so opposite of that would then be discordant. Right. So if I have you know, layers of rock. Layers of rock. And then I've got a magma chamber and it cuts through it, kind of cuts across it. Uh -huh. And it forms a rock across those layers that were already there. Right. So if it's discordant, we're going to look for <coughs> things cutting across existing layers. Yep. If it's concordant, we'll look for things that are parallel to existing layers. Absolutely. Massive, really big, and tabular being... Just kind of flat. Flat-shaped cool. and horizontal. Okay, Easy good. Enough. So let's go on and look at some of the structures that are left behind. <coughs> okay, so we got some real-life examples here. So the first one, one of the famous ones, really cool climbing, rock climbing spot is Half Dome yeah. in Yosemite or Yosemite, however you say Yosemite National Park in Yosemite. California. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it looks like a big dome. Kind of looks kind of big in shape, right? Mm -hmm. So is that probably going to be something that's massive, right? It is massive. Okay. Right. And what we'll find out about that is that it's the remnant of a magma chamber. Oh, okay. So let's take a look at the drawing up in the top right corner first and try to get our bearings on, <coughs> on where we are and what we're seeing. Okay. So over to the left side of this, this drawing, we can see where there's a nice little volcano still drawn there, a composite mm -hmm. volcano, mm -hmm. and the plumbing system underneath it. So you've got the so volcanic conduit. The pipe that uh -huh. goes all the way down towards the magma chamber. Uh -huh. Okay. So here's the magma chamber okay. underneath. Yeah. And if we think about a magma chamber under an extinct volcano, mm -hmm. the magma in that magma chamber over millions of years is going to cool very slowly. So yeah. you're going to have some nice big phaneritic crystals. Big crystals, yeah. And it's just going to cool underground. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's always going to stay there? It's well, always going to be underground. Hmm. So there could be an instance where that whole region could be uplifted. Okay, so plate tectonics moving it up somehow. Right. Okay. And if it's uplifted, then you're going to have erosion acting on the surface of it. And over millions of years, you could erode away all the overlying material, and you could expose what used to be the magma chamber. Okay, so we had a magma chamber that cooled nice and slow underneath the surface of the Earth. Right. It got lifted towards the surface. And then everything above eroded it away. was eroded away, and we were left with this cool dome shape. Correct. Cool. All right. So that is a massive structure, mm -hmm. and Half Dome is a perfect <coughs> example of that. Okay. And what we're seeing there that tells us that that's how it formed is we're seeing granite, which, of course, is phaneritic, mm -hmm. nice big crystals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Next one I see is the Transantarctic Mountains. Right. And it's something I noticed in this picture right in the middle, mm -hmm. it looks like I've got... Lighter colors on top, and a nice dark band right across the Perfect. middle of it. yeah. And you can see that it's a horizontal band, so that would be kind of a tabular structure. Okay, because it's nice and flat. Uh-huh. And it's not cutting across the layers that surround it. So it's, it's concordant. Concordant. Okay. All right, so how does that nice structure form? Okay, well, I'm looking at our picture here, mm -hmm. and just above that composite volcano, yeah. or sorry, just below the composite volcano on the left, I've seen this picture that looks like a sill. Right. Or it says a sill. Okay? Right. And it's a sill and it runs kind of flat and horizontal. And it's not cutting across any of the layers. Okay. It's going parallel with those layers. 
And when I think of a sill, I think of like a window sill. Yeah. That's the like the ledge on the bottom of the window. Right. And it runs horizontal. Okay. So we get the magma that actually gups up to the sur to the surface, meets a rock that it doesn't totally break through, and it spreads out that tabular form mm -hmm. and cools down there. And forms a sill like we're seeing in Antarctica. Cool. Okay, our third example, which is a place that I hope everybody gets to go and visit sometime because it really is a spectacular place, is Shiprock, New Mexico. So we actually, in this picture, have two different features. We've got the volcanic neck and we have the volcanic dike. So let's deal with the volcanic dike first. Since we just talked about concordant, let's talk about discordant. Okay, so this dike had to have cut across other layers, right? Right. Okay, so... Uh, if we looked at the picture, basically we would be seeing a dike right in the middle here. Okay, mm -hmm. so they call it a stack, and then under, above it is the dike. It's cutting straight across those layers, right. cutting right through them. Right, and what we're seeing here is the surface <coughs> where it made it up to the surface, or the surface was eroded away, exposing mm -hmm. this dike structure okay. that is part of shiprock. Now the other feature that we're seeing is we're seeing a volcanic neck. No. So if we go back to the volcano, and we think about the cone itself, uh -huh. we think about inside the cone is the pipe that mm -hmm. the lava actually comes up and leaves the crater through. Mm -hmm. That volcanic structure is what's eroded away oh. and left behind the material that was in the pipe so previously. That, so that pipe is like the last thing standing. Everything else has been eroded away and you get this cool kind of towering feature almost. Right, okay. and that's the volcanic neck. Okay. Okay, so we've got <coughs> up here Half dome. Half dome, which was which part of the batholith. Part of the batholith. Okay. And then we have the sill. We have the dike, which is discordant. Okay. And we've got the volcanic neck. Okay. Okay. So we have a couple more structures to talk about on the next slide. Okay. So I see the one up on the left, mm -hmm. and it's Devil's Tower. Yeah. Now that looks really cool because to me, I, it looks like there's a bunch of kind of columns or pillars. Mm -hmm. what, what would those pillars be from? So. The interesting thing about those pillars <coughs> is if you go up and you look at them, they are very regular in shape. Oh, yeah. And they're yeah. actually called columnar joints. And aren't they like hexagonal, too? They are. Okay, they are. cool. And they are pretty big around. Yeah. But what we think is happening with the formation of those is that when the magma is actually cooling, that it's condensing a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's causing the fractures around each of the columns to form. They're still butted up against each other, but it's a nice fracture pattern. And it's almost like a big tessellation. There are a bunch of hexagons. Sometimes mm -hmm. they have seven or eight sides, usually six. And when they shrink, they just shrink a little bit, and they form like a honeycomb pattern. Exactly. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So in the bottom right corner, we've got Shiprock already, which was a volcanic neck. Yep. We already talked about that one. Mm -hmm. And the last one that we have on here is Bear Butte in South mm. Dakota. Okay. So this is a really interesting place because what this is, is it's a place where there's kind of a failed volcano. Oh, so if okay. you think about what we talked about earlier with a lava dome, mm -hmm. with the lava pushing up underneath, mm -hmm. but that lava never actually broke through the surface. Oh, it was the volcano that never was. It, the volcano that never was. So okay. what you're left with is this structure that remains there. And that's Bear Butte. And then at some point it had to be lifted towards this, like lifted up, and then everything else eroded away. Right. Okay. A couple other things that are shown up here on the diagram, but not in the pictures that you should be aware of. It says a lava mesa and a lava plateau. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get a chance to go out to the southwestern U.S., you're going to see lots of things like mesas and plateaus and buttes. Uh huh. And those are really interesting structures. But what what are those? Um, it, well, if you look at the picture, they look pretty flat, mm -hmm. okay? And it looks like everything else has been eroded away. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that was the more sturdy or the less res or the more, more resistant resist. material that was left behind after you eroded everything else away. Right. Yeah. One other structure that we have up here in the diagram, but we don't have a picture of that, is called a lacolith. That's that one. Mm -hmm. Is that one concordant or discordant? Ooh, so it looks like it is concordant right. because it hasn't really broken through and it's parallel with the rock that's already around it. And would you expect in the case of a lacolith to have more of a phanaritic rock or more of an aphanitic rock? Ooh, so it's under the surface. Yeah. So it's got to be cooling a little bit slower, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's got to be phanaritic. It should be phanaritic. Bigger crystals. Yes, good. Good, okay, cool. 
All right, so we have a little mastery check quiz on these features, mm -hmm. and we're going to encourage you guys to come back to the slides and check them out if you need to as you're working on that mastery check. But these are the features that are left behind after the volcano is gone. And you guys can point these features out next time you're on a road trip with your family going out to the west. Awesome. Cool. I want to go now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, all right. Thanks, guys. See, See you guys. guys.